What in heaven's name are you doing? For pity's sake, let's get out of here. Oh, please, Herbert. Uh, uh, just in another moment. What are you crawling around for down underneath those seats? Well, I'm not crawling. I'm just looking at my shoe. Your shoe. Every time we go to the movies, it's a glove or an earring. Now a shoe. Well, they hurt my feet and I took them off. I, I mean, I just slipped my feet out of them. Women do it all the time at the movies, Herbert. Oh, well, they do, do they? The next time we go to the movies, if we ever do, give me your shoes and I'll hold them in my lap. Oh, Herbert, please. If women would buy their shoes big enough to begin hey, with. Excuse uh, me, folks. The show's over. We're closing up. Uh, anything wrong? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing's wrong. Just go ahead and close up. We'll have to be here all night. Oh, it's my shoe. Somebody kicked it going out, and I can't find it. Oh, well, I have a flashlight here. Let me help you look. Let's see. Uh, uh no. No, it's not under these seats. No, it's not over here. Oh, there it is, all the way down the next row. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. If it had been on your foot where it belonged. Here, I have it. Here you are, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Glad to be of help. Oh, there. I'm already, Herbert. You're positive? You haven't left your handbag behind? Or maybe your head? Or... That's not very kind. Lots of women... I know. Lots of women take off their shoes. But they don't lose them. Only you. Everything you touch either burns up or blows up or stops working or you lose it. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. No, no. Of course not. Not until next time. Well, good night, folks. Hope you enjoyed the picture. Come again. I will, friend, some night when I'm in the mood to be utterly bored. Tony, where are those sirens? Oh, someone said a bunch of hot riders were drag racing down the main street and the police are after them. <laughs> Sounds as if they're giving those patrol cars quite a chase, doesn't it? Well, if you ask me, this city is going to Hades in a handbasket. Hot riders all over town, muggings, holdups. Well, good night, folks. Have to lock up now. Well... Come on, Dorothy. How do you like that for being given the bones rush? Took more than a broken television set to get me to this movie again. Oh. But I don't think he meant anything by being in a hurry. He might have to pay overtime or something if he didn't close up on time. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You're always making excuses for the other fellow. That's you. Stray dogs and cats and hobos love you. You're such a soft touch. Well, I do think it makes life easier if we can all be nice to each other. I don't see anything wrong with that. Being nice to someone just gives them the chance to kick you in the teeth. Well, here we are. Street empty and not a taxi in sight. Now, you stay here. I'll walk around the corner and see if I can find a cab there. Oh, yes, dear. And for pity's sake, stay put. Don't wander around and get lost. Too bad. Dorothy, have you asked him yet? Asked 
Albert? Yes. When I saw you in the theater, I waited out here hoping to get a chance to speak to you. Well, you asked him if you'll help us? Why, no. Uh, not yet, Harriet. Well, I thought that if I saw both of you, I might even bring up the subject myself. Oh, no, no, no. You mustn't. Please, now, please promise me. Promise me that you won't say a word. Well, of course, my dear. Of course, I promise. But, well, heavens, don't be so frightened. What? You're trembling. Well, you gave me such a turn saying that you might speak to her. But you see, you see... I'm waiting for the right moment. Oh, well, yes, of course, I understand. I won't say anything, but we mustn't delay too long, Dorothy. You do realize that. Oh, yes, I know. This is the kind of chance that comes only once in a lifetime. If you don't do it now, you may never have the chance again. I understand. Really, I do. I'll ask you first thing tomorrow. Oh, good. It would be a dreadful shame to lose this opportunity. Oh, oh, believe me, I'm not thinking just of myself, although, of course, it's important to me, too. I know that, Harriet. Sometimes a certain thing comes along that's a, a turning point in your life, and I just feel that this is one of those times for you. I feel it myself, but I just don't know how to bring it up to her. Bernie, this is one time when you just have to face up to things. Well, otherwise, look at you. You'll be cooped up in an apartment the rest of your life, dusting and cleaning things over and over and over and over again. Well, you'll just have something to do, just to justify your existence. But there's never a right time when I can stand up to him, Harriet. There's never the right moment. Oh, I've always wanted to. If only I had the nerve. No, 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 don't get yourself all worked up. Heavens, it's such a simple, normal thing. It's not as if you were asking for the moon. It might as well be. I'm sure there must be a simple, normal way to manage it. <gasps> Come to think of it. I have an idea. What is it, Harriet? Well, it's only two blocks from here. Yes, yes. You suggest walking home. Then take your husband past it and show him. Then explain what we want to do, you and myself and Mrs. Friedberg. Oh, you mean tonight? Oh, yes, 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 immediately. He's such a good businessman. I know he'll see the possibilities. All right, I'll do it. I'll ask him tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Let me know as soon as you can what he says. Good night, my dear. Good night. Wouldn't you know it? Not a cab in sight. Oh, well, I don't mind walking. Such a lovely night. Such a pleasant breeze. Yeah, but look at the moon. Hear those sirens. Those hot rodders. Wild animals loose on our streets. Oh, I'm sure they're just high-spirited, not vicious. And I do think it'll be fun to walk home. Uh, all right, if you think your feet will stand it. Oh, I like to walk. Remember back in Delville, I walked all the time. Yes, yes, in good, honest walking shoes. Uh, sometimes I wish we'd stayed in Delville instead of coming to the city. Oh, but it was a promotion from the factory, Herbert. I'm proud that you're a branch manager. <laughs> well, that'll good it does. You get so fancy and fashionable that you buy shoes so tight you can't keep them on. Oh, I guess I did get carried away when I brought these shoes. They were so beautiful. But I'll know better next time. Beautiful. Shoes are shoes. They're made to be walked in, not looked at. Coming to live in the city has changed you, Dorothy, and I don't like it. Any more than I like the city or the people here. Incidentally, who was that I saw speaking to you outside the theater? Oh, that was Mrs. McGuire. You know, she lives in the apartment above us. Oh, yes, the, the actress. I certainly hate to think what our friends back in Delville would say if they knew we had to live in a building full of actresses and painters and people like that. Mrs. McGuire is a very nice person, warm and friendly. Too friendly. Next, she'll be borrowing money from you or trying to. Just see that you don't fall for anything. Well, come on across the street. What are you standing there on the corner for? I thought that perhaps we could go home down this way. Down that way? Well, what for? It'll take us two blocks farther to get home. But it's such a nice night for walking, and I want to show you something. Show me something? Well, now, what on earth can you show me on a street like this? Well, it, it's a surprise. A surprise? There's something odd about your manner. Now, what the deuce are you up to now? Well, it's just something that I wanted to... Grip it, those cars! What the... They're coming to say, jump quick, they'll hit you!
return to Sirens in the Night in a moment. officials open recreation areas nights, weekends, and during the summer. If you don't help, nobody else will. For information, write Fitness, Washington, D.C., Officer! Officer! What happened, mister? You all right? Sure. Sure. Just a skimmed hand and a bruised knee. I managed to duck your buddy's bullets. Sorry, mister. You just happened to be crossing the street at the wrong time. We're after two men who threw a brick through a jewelry store window and got away with some valuable diamonds. Oh, then that car, they... they weren't hot rodders. No, ma'am. We rounded them up a while ago. The men we're after are dangerous criminals. Probably armed. You sure you don't want to go to the municipal hospital and get checked over? I'm positive. All I want is a little peace and quiet, if that's not too much to ask for. Right. Sorry you hurt your hand. Come on, Joe. we got to get going. Well, it's a fine thing when a man can't even cross the street without being almost killed by a car full of crooks or by a bunch of cops. I'm telling you, Dorothy, this city isn't a fit place to live in. Oh, but there are lots of awfully nice people here, Herbert. Well, it's funny. I never meet any of them. Well, let's get going. Now, down this other block like you want. No, no, I'd rather go straight home. When you have something for me to see, whatever it is, I want to see it. But I want to get you home so I can bend you your hand for you. My hand can wait. Now, you said you had a surprise for me. I want to see it. But I don't think this is a good time for it. Five minutes ago was a good time for it. What's so different now? All right. It's just down the street, down in the middle of the block. The middle of the block? What's so special about a block full of crummy-looking stores? For the life of me, I cannot imagine what you want to drag me down here for. Well, you insisted on coming. Well, you insisted on bringing me. Well, after everything else, it may not be such a wonderful surprise, but... Well, here we are. We are? Yes. You see... No, no, no. Don't, don't tell me. Let me guess. There's a store, Manny's Delicatessen. You wanted me to see the smoked salmon in the window. Very pretty. Very pretty. Please don't make fun of me, Herbert. Three guesses. I'm allowed three guesses. It can't be this empty store, so it must be George's work clothes over there. Say, that's a fine pair of overalls. I always wanted a pair like that. Please don't make fun of me. It is the empty store. You brought me here at half past eleven at night to show me an empty store? Now, what earthly interest could I have in an empty store? It's not you. It's me. I have an interest in it. I haven't the foggiest idea of what you're getting at. You see, Herbert. Yes? You remember when we lived in Delville, how I always made my own hats, and the other women raved about them, and when the church had a bazaar, I made some hats for it, and the women always fought to buy them. I remember. Nice hobby for a woman to have, making her own hats. Well, since the factory transferred you here to the city... Well, go on, go on. Uh, I've made several more hats, and Mrs. McGuire noticed them, and she raved about them. Well, what's that got to do with an empty store? Well, she actually took three of the hats and sold them to her friends. 
And she got $25 a piece for them. Hmm. Well, it's nice to have spending money, but I, I still don't see what you're driving at. Well, I want to open a little hat store. Open a little hat store? Custom-made hats only. I'll make them, and Mrs. McGuire will sell them. And Mrs. Friedman, her husband owns the delicatessen and this empty store. She'll handle the bookkeeping. She says the store can be rented very reasonably. And I even have a name for it all picked out. Hats by Dorothy. Don't you think it sounds like fun, Herbert? Hats by Dorothy. Hats by Dorothy. Very pretty. Won't it sound wonderful when the news gets back to Delville and all of our friends hear that my wife, Mrs. Herbert Harrison, is running a hat store next to a delicatessen. I can just see their faces. Oh, but this is just a start. If everything goes well, in a year or so, we can move to the avenue. Oh, please say yes, Herbert. I can do it. Really, I know I can, and, and you won't be bothered a bit by any of the details. All I need is a thousand dollars to get it started. Just a thousand dollars, and of course it's a loan. Just a thousand dollars. That's all you need. Just a thousand dollars. Mrs. Friedman said we might even be able to get started for seven hundred and fifty. Do you have the slightest idea of what you're saying? No, no, of course you don't. You believe anything that anybody tells you. Please, Herbert, can't you understand? I can understand all too well, believe me. Somehow this Mrs. Friedman has cooked up a scheme to rent her husband's empty store. It wasn't any scheme. It came about all by accident, a lucky kind of accident. It seems to me as if Mrs. Friedman and Mrs. McGuire have rigged up some kind of a plan to rent a shabby, run-down, excuse of a store and get some money from you at the same time. They're using you to play me for a sucker in their little game. But it's not like that at all. Not as if we had a family to take care of. I wouldn't really be neglecting anything. Nothing except your home and your husband, if that makes any difference. How do you think I'd feel having people say that my wife had to work? But that has nothing to do with it, really. People understand things like that. Well, maybe some people do, but I can't. I just don't see what in the world you have to complain about. Oh, Herbert, I'm not complaining. It's just that... But I have a talent, and I want to use it. Talent? You mean making silly hats for sillier women? Oh, it doesn't make any difference what the talent is. I want to do things. I don't want to go on this way. I I need some kind of change. Very well. It just so happens that I have some information for you. Now that you've given me your surprise, I'll give you mine. I've applied for a transfer back to the factory. Next month, we're going back to Delville. Back to Delville? Oh, no. Just what have you got against Delville? He used to like it there. Well, it's just that I like the city. It's alive and exciting. Delville is so dead. It's quiet and peaceful. And that's what I want. Now, now come along. We're going home, and I don't want to hear another word about this crazy idea about a hatch. All right, Herbert. I guess it was crazy. For a little while, I thought that maybe... What's that? What's what? My foot hit something. It's here in the shadows. I have it. Herbert, look. A, a gun. A thirty-two automatic. And it was lying right on the pavement. Why, well, I bet I know how it got there. That car. Those men in it. They threw it away so if the police caught them, they wouldn't find it. Probably so. Crimes are punished much more severely when the criminal is carrying a gun. A real criminal's gun. It may have killed somebody. All right, all right. Now, now, now put it down. It's probably loaded. And that little lever on the side, that's the safety catch. And it is none. Now, that gun could go off that way. Oh, it's like a movie, isn't it? The criminal's fleeing from the police. They throw away a gun. We find I it. I tell you, put it down. That's an automatic. Now, don't swing it around that way. Put it down. You could kill one of us. Why, it could go off, couldn't it? You're always saying that anything I touch burns out or explodes or goes off. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So if I happen to touch the trigger, it would just be an awful accident. 
Well, what's wrong with you? You're talking very strangely. An accident? Nobody could ever blame me for. They just feel sorry for me. Did you hear me tell you to put that gun down? And it isn't as if you were nice to me. You really speak to me very badly. Dorothy! So, I've just made up my mind. You can go back to Delville and have all the peace and quiet there is. Are you insane? But that's the trigger you're touching. But I'm going to stay here and open my hat shop. The man with no name smokes a short cigar. The man with no name wears a poncho over the fastest long gun you'll ever see. He's going to trigger a whole new style in adventure. This nameless man is played by Clint Eastwood. The name of the film is A Fistful of Dollars. It's from United Artists. It's the first motion picture of its kind. A fistful of dollars. Technicolor. Alexander Vlastovchenko, orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. We hope you enjoyed this evening's two dramas and invite you to stay tuned each Sunday night at 5.05 for radio entertainment that's hard to find. We welcome your comments on these shows. Write to Theater 5, WLS-FM, 360 North Michigan, Chicago 60601. 